and I was like looking, scrolling Instagram, and it, it must have been like a, a National Siblings Day or a National like Cookie Day or something like that. And I was like, I'm gonna create a national holiday, and he kind of looked at me, my homeboy. And he's like, What? I'm like, Yeah, I'm just gonna cre- I'm gonna launch a campaign that is a national holiday. It's gonna be National Goal Writing Day. Welcome to the Speak Your Success Podcast. What's going on, successors? Welcome to the Speak Your Success podcast. I'm your host, TEDx speaker and best-selling author, Jonathan Jones. And today we have a very special guest in the studio. We have a special visitor. We're going to get to him just momentarily. I'm going to welcome him accordingly. Uh, but first, as we always kick off the show, we like to just take the time and, and shout out a faithful and loyal listener and supporter of the podcast. Uh, and during this time, this is when we read an Apple review of the week. And this review actually comes from Mr. Dennis McMurray. And uh, Dennis went on to say that he just really can appreciate the podcast just based on the way that the, the, the application is so tangible and very applicable to life. He said he loves the show and just extremely appreciates the motivation. So, Dennis, we want to give you a special thank you and just shout you out, brother, for just uh, being a faithful supporter and, and just helping us grow the podcast with everything that you do. So thank you, Dennis. We appreciate that. Thank and, you, Dennis. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. And uh, if you would like the opportunity to become the, the listener of the week, we would encourage you just to go to iTunes, type in Speak Your Success. Uh, the podcast will pop up. Scroll to the bottom, click Write a Review, and then hopefully it will be a five-star review, and then just leave your comments there. Um, so without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and welcome our guest. His name, uh, I, I don't think, really needs an introduction. No oh, man. Yeah, come I don't on. Think, I don't even know if my man needs an introduction, but uh, we're, we're going to welcome uh, Mr. Marcus Gilmore to the Speak Your Success podcast. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? I appreciate you having me on here. So it's been long awaited, man. You know, long awaited that um, we should be having this this sit down, man. Yeah, you know? man. Because I, I know I know when I know when I started up the podcast, and even when I was just going out, you know, with, with my book, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I, I had to get you in the corner. I'm like, hey, Marcus, what's up? You said you want to get this book, man. Hey, I copped, didn't I? So you, no, 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 you copped yeah. the book. Yeah, 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 yeah. You support it. No, yeah. no, no, you support Where it. Where I get you a book it. at? And yeah, um, we, we were at it was at one of KG's events. Yeah, at actually, the, um, maybe the fashion show that Cosine had. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Cosine yeah. had the fashion show, and then even bringing that up, I thought about it just before we got started that yeah, you you won you won the pub, public figure of the year, right? Yeah, last year was the inaugural year for the Cosine Awards, and yeah. I was the uh, first recipient of uh, the public figure of the year. So that was amazing, man. And yeah, then man. Uh, my guy Desi Brown, uh, who I had lunch with this week. Oh, nice. Um, you know, he was number two. So we, I was teasing him a little bit. We went to UNT <laughs> together. So uh, great guy oh, as well. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, De- Desi, Desi is super dope, super oh, connected. Yeah. Bo- I mean, both of y'all, both of y'all are dumb connected. Yeah. Like, out, oh, out here he's way more. I'm man. just learning. I'm still carrying crates, man. Hey, man, it is. Hey, serving leadership. That's what it is. It is yeah. what it is, man. Oh, it yeah. It is what it is. But, man, so, Marcus, I, de- I definitely want to bring you on the show because I know – even before the cosign and even before all the right. dope stuff you're doing now, which we'll get into a little bit later. But I remember before I even knew you, me and you both were featured in, I think it was uh, Jamisha. Jamisha, she yes. She did like a write-up. What was Jamisha's it, 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 it was uh, for her website. It was like The Bar Jar or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, um, shout out to Jamisha Daniels. We went to yeah. UNT together, too. We oh, actually really? in a lot of classes, too, together. Dang, I didn't yeah, know that. a lot of journalism classes uh, and television classes as well. Uh, but I do remember that. That's okay. super dope. Because yeah. yeah, she highlighted. I, I believe she highlighted like seven millennials. Millennials. Um, and then that was when I. That was when I followed you, and I, yeah. I think that was like my first interaction with you because I think I ended up reaching out to you probably. Well, it probably like a year or so after that. But right. I, I followed you from that point, and then just began started to engaging with you know what you right. were doing on social media and, right. and all that. But man, so, so that's see how that's so crazy. The world's so small man, and it's man. It's crazy. That's yeah. super crazy, man, 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 Marcus. So, so share share with us your sto- your story, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, let, let, let the people get to know you. So, taking it back, I jumped into media at ten years old. That's where the passion uh, started from. Uh, where I was uh, in Dallas, I was at my church, Newburgh Baptist Church, is in Oak Cliff. Oh yeah. And uh, so I served on the media ministry there um, at ten and eleven, and then um, I was able to get on the team. My mentor Ed Brown. Uh, he allowed me to be on his team, and I worked every Sunday, but I was just moving the cords for the guys running the cameras. Mm. And then I moved up to camera operator. And then he uh, he allowed me to be 
uh, the audio person. So I would run the audio for the whole service for church. Like, this is a big deal because that's huge. we got two services. So it's 7.50, and I'm up early with my dad. Mm. And uh, so that's the beginning of media for me. Then I had an opportunity to go to uh, the University of North Texas, uh, where I studied RTVF and, you know, <laughs> Mean Green. They did really good this year. I'm glad they went to shout the Shout out to game. Mean Green, man. Yeah, um, shout so, out to UNT. So uh, went – uh, was a major in radio, television, and film, and then I uh, worked in um, on the television show as well, being a producer. Um, and then I also had the opportunity to have my own radio show. Every mm-hmm. Tuesday and Thursday, I did 12 to 12.25, and I did the news, and I read the news um, on the jazz station there. I can't remember hey. my intro, but... It was just like that's where I learned how to like write really short clips of news mm. um, because I had to at that time. Man. Then I graduated. Um, well, before then, I became an intern for uh, Tom Joyner, and he's yeah, based yeah, here yeah, in yeah. Dallas, and I worked yeah. for his son, Tom Joyner Jr. Um, and he gave me a lot of opportunity to just explore and be different and just, he was like, do whatever you want for, with our social media, like, wow. you know, be consistent. So, um, I did that. I was his first intern. Then I had the opportunity to uh, move there full time. So I worked for him nice. for three years and I worked on the Tom Joyner Cruise. I did a lot of content with celebrities, uh, went to a lot of HBCU homecomings. Their homecomings are something else, like nothing like uh, Man. the other Man. homecomings. I, I, went to, I went to Southern a few, uh, a few months ago. Brother, when I tell you that it's an experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like we're talking about something totally like it, it, like a dope experience. That dope I, experience. I felt like I was man. deprived. When I, I was, I was like, held man, back from yeah, that. I was yeah. like, what you? What? I, this is what I missed. Yeah. Y'all having fried catfish? Yeah, fried catfish, catfish at the tent. I ain't I'm like, pull up to the tent. What? You, y'all got it? Up. But yeah. yeah. Go 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 ahead. Yeah. Man. yeah, yeah, yeah um. Man. So during that time, I worked for him for three years. Okay. Uh, about a year ago, around in May, there was an email that came through about an opportunity to. Uh, this is 2017. There was an email that came through. Um, that said uh, Verizon Ad Fellows. They're launching their new advertising po- program for minorities. Uh, you have to be three years or less out of college mm. uh, with a degree. Well, it just happened to be it was my coming up on my third year mark nice. of um, from graduating from college. Yeah. So I was like, all right, bet I'm going to just apply. I didn't know what was going to happen. I applied, ended up getting selected for an interview, took a um, Just a turnaround day trip to New York, flew in early in the morning, Mm. did the interview, flew back to Dallas. Um, Two months later, they said, hey, we want to offer you the opportunity to be in this internship. Mind you, like, I'm already working, so I'm going to leave. I'm going to take a step back and uh, do an internship, and that means it's not a full-time job, right? So, sacrifice. Like, my parents are like, you sure you want to do that? I'm like, yeah, like, this is it. Like, this is the way to to go to the next level. This is mm-hmm. the opportunity. Yeah. And so I went back and forth with myself a lot because I was nervous. Like, this is all I've built up mm-hmm. here in Dallas. Um, and, you know, I went through a lot here. Do I really want to leave that? Do I want to leave before I see it, I guess, come to this man success or this fruition? Which, you know, I don't know that. I don't know if I stay would that have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had the opportunity to, I just said yes. I moved to New York. And so I've been there for a year and a half. And um, so the, the internship involved me working for Verizon's um, partners, advertising partners, and I did each one. I did four different ones for eight weeks. And at the end, they offered a job. Mm. and uh, which, wasn't, which wasn't guaranteed. It wasn't guaranteed. Man. But they, there was like 20 job openings. Uh, only applied to one because I knew this is where, where I was supposed get. to be. I applied to two. Not let me, don't let me lie. One sounded pretty good for the story. One, but, one, one sounded great for the story. <laughs> but two is reality. But I, I did two to back up because my dad said, make sure you have mm, something. Like, don't do that. That's good. Like, so, hey, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my Wisdom. dad is like my balance. Like, I'm, I'm so like, I'm just going to do it. And, you know, I'm Go just going to. And he's like, but did you think about come Come through with other, them. Yeah. yeah you no. Know, <laughs> he already been through these things. He used to tell me when I was like 13, 14. He was like, you know, I already been 13, right? Mm. And I get 20. He's like, you, are, you know, I've already been 20, right? Mm. You know, I've already been 25 and 28. Like, so I like I was, that. how can I go yeah. wrong? Man. Um, but 
So yeah, I've been there for a year and a half, or a little bit over that time frame. Well, I want, I, I want, I want to, I want to. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Yeah, I, I was, I was locked in with the story, but I, I got a question for you. So mm-hmm. you said, I, I want to tie together two points. So you said you were working full time out here in Dallas. True. With Tom Joyner. True. Then you moved to New York, and then not. I don't want to say downgraded to an internship, but you moved to New York and accepted the internship. Yeah. So wh- like, wh- what do you have? Like, wh- I'm just curious what your mindset was there. As well as what was your mindset when you were younger and you were moving the cords, not knowing what it would lead to? Um, so the moving the cords part, I think that I didn't understand it at that time, but it mm. was just, it was like that mentor, and he's still my mentor, he was teaching me responsibility and accountability the whole time. Like, mm. without you moving the cords, the camera can't move around the church, That's right? Good. Because we're on television, uh, Every Sunday morning, we're on radio. Every Sunday morning, so you are the little you not you are the little piece to this puzzle. Mm-hmm. And if you don't move the cords, my camera doesn't move. And so the accountability and that that's what I learned at that that moment. Moving to New York, it was an internship, but it was paid and it was stipend, mm-hmm. and that's a safety net. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. pass on that. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not, yeah, that's not bad. You know, like, you're, you're going to take care of both. Like, because the biggest thing people talk about when they're about New York, what's the first thing they say? The cost. The cost. Yeah, the cost, hands down. My cost covered. you going to mm. pay me? Oh, okay, bet. And mm. I just, you know, i only been out of college three years, so, like, the living that lifestyle of, you know, I could splurge a little bit better in New York, but at that time, you know, college, you just, you live by what you need to live, get by. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. do I need Cheez-Its? Cookies, Pringles, all that kind of stuff. No, well, I, only, I really like cheese. It's over everything, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have me a box of hot and spicy cheeses. Like that's yeah. what I like. So that's my, get you know, like I'm not gonna splurge all the time. So I had to learn that responsibility again. Mm, man, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I, like, because I, I didn't know. Wait, did all I answer your this. question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you, you answered it. Yeah, you definitely answered it. Um, because yeah, I'm, I'm just always curious just to hear like the mindset, and then I think that I think that's dope that. That what you started doing as a child, and you had the direction as a child because right. it's like okay, you got the cords, and you said responsibility and accountability, and then your mentor saw he was like okay, well, well he he gets it, he understands, right? So let me give him a little bit more responsibility right. now, right, right, and then move, and then now doing what you're doing, like I mean, I, I think that's super dope because right. it's like you've moved up the ladder, I guess, in in the media field, right, versus from. You know, like once you where you once were moving the cords. Right. And I mean, and I missed a part in the story, but it was during that time I was working for Time Joint. I was also working at NBC and I would wake up Saturday and Sunday after working the whole week, Saturday and Sunday, 4 a.m. Mm. at the news station. Now, one thing about the news station, it does not stop. Mm. Right. It can be snowy, it can be storming, it can be any of that. You still have to go in. Everybody is going in like to the office. Oh, wow. So. I mean, into the studio. So I'm doing that, right? 23, 24. I'm like, every morning I get up, I'm like, I don't, do I really want to do this? But at the, in the back of my mind, uh, the the um, the lecturer, not the lecturer, but the professor that got me into NBC, mm. she was like, this is where you need to kind of like get your wheels going. So I would do that. And I was doing uh, scripts and running the teleprompter and all of these things. Like there are moments in that those mornings where it's like, oh man, like why am I here in this in this morning? But I knew that I had to be there mm-hmm. because it was granting me an opportunity into the corporate style of media. Like Dallas is number five, top mm-hmm. five market in media, and I'm working wow. at NBC, number wow. channel five. Oh wow, man. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of reflecting with you right now. I appreciate hey, it. Man. No, no, it's no. Cool, that, that, that's, that's dope, though. Not because, yeah. I mean, like, having an opportunity to go back. No, no, no. no, no, no. I just had an itch. <laughs> Unless you've been hitting the gym, you know something I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've been yeah. taking this boxing class, so I might yeah. be a little bit more firmer than once yeah. I... How's boxing? Know, so. What is it? Bruh. I saw Creed, uh, Creed 2 the other day. Man, what? Yeah. So after... after well, first, that was part of my motivation because I saw the first Creed, and I was like, oh... Michael B. Jordan, these muscles ain't real, brother. Yeah. I got to see for myself. Yeah. So then I started doing a boxing class. Yeah. And, man, shout out to Sweat out in Irving. One thing is really dope. They start the first half, and then we do, like, we do like general workout yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Then we, you know, we, we wrap up, and then we go in and we do the bags, and sometimes we get in the ring. But one thing that's really dope about it is just, 
bro, I, like I'm I'm seeing gains and it and it's triggering different parts of my muscles than wow. I would do if I would because you know we hoop yeah and you know we know we'll we'll go do play yeah, around with the dumbbells what, yeah. hit the bench. And it's like, okay, whatever. I ain't doing squats. You know, I, yeah, like, nah, you, don't, yeah. you might get on the machine. Like, yeah, I'm getting on the machine, yeah. But other than that, but nah, man, they got us going down, like, do the planks and then, like, touch this leg here and do uh, this. So it's just really dope because yeah. I go home, I wake up the next day, I'm sore, I'm sore, I'm sore, I'm sore, I'm sore, but I know I'm growing. Yeah. So, yeah, good. boxing boxing, super dope. That's it's it's super dope. Man, once again, shout out to Brandon Paraway and Hector over there, man, over at uh, Sweat and Irving. They will definitely get you right. But uh, yeah, man. So we were talking about all this now. Now tell us, tell us, when did the culture supply? When, when, when did the culture supplier? Yeah. When, when did that come about? So it came about at the same time as working for Tom Joyner, uh, the Tom Joyner Foundation, uh, working at NBC Five, and the culture supplier came during that moment as well. Wow. Right. So uh, during this time, there were a lot of stories about our young kings being killed. Like it was story after story after story. And so I was like, I just want to help tell this story. And so that's what the coach supplier actually was just, it focuses on uh, positive news, but mm. this was like a lead in. I was like, I can do this too, like talk about these narratives. Uh, but the coach supplier focuses on positive news, upl- uplifting news, where we cover in sports, music, tech, uh, um, finance, uh, girlfriends of culture, uh, which means a lot to me as well. Like those, these different categories are the foundation of the coach supplier. Um, and so during that time, like I said, I created it in the first website I put out, which was not hot, but <laughs> I went with it, uh, but built just off my knowledge that I know about websites. Okay. And then I linked up with a guy uh, named Casey and he helped me kind of take it to where it is today. Mm. And he stays on me about it. Uh, so I'm continuing to learn how to create the culture supplier and not create it, but like grow it in a way that is effective mm. because... How many people are really going to a dot com all consistently, mm, right? Yeah, so they yeah. may not go every day, but they go at least once a week or twice a week or three times a week. Yeah. And it's cool to drive traffic every day, but like the it it's gotta be meaningful. I'm not just mm-hmm. gonna post random stuff just to get clicks. Man. Like I tell stories, I tell Click narratives, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. I allow these different types of people, my contributors, my writers from all over to contribute their real content. Mm. Right. So uh, that's a little a little bit about it. Yeah, that's that's super. Dope. And, and one thing one thing I, I appreciate appreciate about what you just said before you said the original website that you put out. Now you're looking back, and now you're saying it's not hot. Oh but, yeah, but then oh, I mean, it was tight. Like yeah, it, it that, was orange. Right. It was it was clean. I was like, oh, I got you know. Like I just had a website that had this constant this feel that if I went to a page, it did what mm-hmm. I what I wanted from it, which gotcha. was give me something interesting and. Something that I can share on my LinkedIn or share on uh, with friends or my colleagues. Like, hey, I went to thecoachsupplier.com and I saw this story. Yeah. Like, you send somebody to certain sites, like, you may, you don't know what you're going to get. And, you know, so that's, those that's things, true. like, I, I really try to put into the narrative of the culture supplier. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's really dope. But yeah. you know, what, I, what I really extracted from what you shared earlier is, is just like, like, just, I like, just do it. Yeah, because you know, there's a lot of people. I know you know a lot of people. I know we all know that many people. They're saying, "Well, I'm going to do this when this is right. right. I'm going to do this when 2019 starts." It's never going to be right. But it's, it's never going. People like people in relationships. Oh, I'm going to wait until. Right. Hey, man. Hey, ma'am. <laughs> I don't know, sir. Hey, it's right. just there, there. There never is a right time. Right. True. Because you said it came to you when you were working what seven days a week, and then yeah. you showing up at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Man, okay. and that, just like, hey, I'm gonna build a site, and it's gonna be called theculturesupplier.com. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it had the logo was a shopping cart with the world in it, and my sister thought it was like weird. It's like, why do you have the world in the shopping cart? And I'm like, it's like, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm supplying the world, and you know, mm. with culture. That's what I thought hey. then. I don't know. Nah, that's dope though. I don't that, know where I was. <laughs> nah, I mean, that's but that's dope though. That sounds dope. Like probably supply- with Kid Cudi or something. That sounds like a, yeah, it like the like man on the moon type. Thing. Yeah, 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 definitely. My what? first, inst- like my first Twitter name was I Kick Moons, and it came from. That's kind of cool Cuddy. though. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Man, Plus, okay. I like Kid Cudi. He's my number, one of my favorite artists. Gucci yeah. Man, Kid Cudi, and uh, Wiz Khalifa. Gucci Man is turning into like a whole He's different a brand. Whole other dude, bro, in not a bad way. It's like yeah, I yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, New York Times bestselling yeah. author. Gucci, Gucci Roger, Roger Davis. <laughs> yeah. 
was so icy and tea, like, man. Because I think he he was getting interviewed by Oprah. Yes. And I was like, Crazy. Bruh, bruh, you, hey, Gucci, from Gucci on what, so icy? Yeah. To now, exactly. Ro- Ro- Roderick Davis. Roderick Davis. Ro- nice to meet you, you Roderick Davis. Yeah, Roderick Davis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inter- interview voice. Yeah, but uh, man, okay, so man, so so like, what else do you have? What else do you have going on? Like, in- is there anything anything big coming up that we should know about? Like, yeah, I mean, well, the biggest thing that's coming up is uh, National Goal Writing Day, of course, like, December twenty yeah, yeah, seventh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is uh, a campaign I launched three years ago. Well, two years ago. This is year three now. Okay. Um, and National Goal Writing Day focuses on. I created this day to help people. Uh, be intentional about their goals. And Mm -hmm. yeah, we have the vision board parties and we say, hey, what are you going to be doing for the next year? But National Goal Writing Day is created to for a day of self-reflection and then taking time to really write these goals down and then sharing them. And some people, you know, they they don't want to share and that's perfectly fine. Like, but encourage others somehow, some way to encourage others. And even if you share generic goals that, you know, you don't want to get too detailed about, but still sharing and letting people know that you're focused as well and that inspires others we're in this we are in, we live in a time where we inspire each other based off our posts that's like, true oh, i saw you yeah oh i, I see you boy oh, i, I see seen that post yeah oh, you, you didn't like it though oh i saw it though yeah oh, yeah okay. but <laughs> you know, people but really petty like really, that <laughs> can't even give any voice to that people are petty like that but uh, yeah, National Goal Writing Day is just, uh, and again, it's my baby. Like, it's one of those things like mm. I'm seeing grow because year one, it's like I'm sitting at uh, a friend's house and I'm like, I'm going to do a national holiday. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a national holiday and National Goal Writing Day. So it comes about. And then year two, I, I, I implement the six month check in. And so now, like, we've grown mm. because you see the logistics of it and you're like, okay, there's other little other pockets. And then I partner with um, different people that are that have um, that do like booklets and stuff, and oh, helping okay. them like find a way to push their booklet that is mm. like where you write goals. Because could I do everything? I possibly could if I poured all of that the resources in there. You but yeah. is it cooler to see other people that already produce these these this type of material, and we all galvanize together, mm. or we all create things together? Even better. It's like National yeah. Goal Writing Day. Like, this is a day for you to pump. Speak your success. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let's, let's get it. You know, let's keep pushing as much as possible everything because we all want each other to be better. And if we're a community that's, like, pushing each other all the time, you know, who knows? And I think that's one thing that I'm exposed to being in New York. Like, I see the community push. Like, I live in a community where we, they push each other. Mm-hmm. They shop together. They do all this stuff. So it's like... I want to see that as well, and and how can I take that energy on and then sh- uh, share with my peers as well? Yeah, I think that's one thing that I probably would say I, I respect the most about you and about your brand yeah. is just like from from the conversations that that we have, right. like you always see how there is a way that you can help, right? Like Definitely. see how, how how can your message, how can we get your message further out? How can we do this? How can we do it? But right. you, you are because even when we connected that time when when you got my book. And then one thing you told me, I think this was like either right when I started my podcast or before. This was before. Right. And you was like, yeah, see about getting other people's podcasts. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. But yeah, we had that conversation. You about told me, you guest posted. I mean, you, you told me getting on other people's podcasts. Yeah, podcast. guest appearing on. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember saying that, but yeah. I, it sounded nah, like something I was nah, saying. you said it. Yeah. No, no, no. You said it. Yeah, you said it. I'll real. give you your credit. Yeah. yeah. But but j- just just thinking about that, and, and like I was even talking with Dennis earlier, because Dennis helped me on, on this podcast. Right. Uh, start this up. But. I think that's one thing that's great about success when we're honest about it. Yeah. That we began to realize that no success was done by any one man or woman. No, it's like not. it it's was it was so much more just like you earlier talking about your mentor. Yeah. And I was just about to say that. Still yeah. being in your life yeah. and I have like four or five mentors as well. Right. And man, but but yeah, that's that's definitely one thing I one thing I respect and and and, and really appreciate uh about your about your brain. Okay, so we, we were talking a little bit about uh, the culture supplier dot com as right. well as uh, National Goal Writing Day. Yes. Um, so, how did this idea actually originate? Or like, take take us back to where you were when, right. like, when you got when the bulb went Ooh. off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which the logo is a bulb. Uh, so, National Goal Writing Day, um, I created it about two years ago. I was at a friend's apartment, and we were talking, just like just chopping it up as like we always do. And I was like looking 
scrolling Instagram and it, it must have been like a, a National Siblings Day or a National like Cookie Day or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to create a national holiday. And he kind of looked at me, my homeboy, and he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to cre- launch a campaign that is a national holiday. It's going to be National Goal Writing Day where I push people to write their goals, make it intentional. At that time, that was what I said. Uh, but National Goal Writing Day is a day where I have created a, a campaign to help people be intentional about their goals and make them meaningful for themselves, mm-hmm. right? Like, th- don't try to impress me or anyone else. What goals do you really want to obtain in the next year? What do you want to start on in the next year to help you continue to propel in life? And so that's what the day is focuses on. And also a day of uh, self-reflection because we forget to congratulate ourselves. Like, mm. bro, you did that. Like, you, yeah. whatever it was, you really did that in the past year. So we, I want to push that to make sure you pat yourself on the back and re-strategize as you go into the new year. How can you knock out six of your seven goals or knock out all seven goals that you may have or knock out three, whatever it is, how can you strategize better this year? So we have to reflect, Mm -hmm. strategize, and then execute for the next year. Mm -hmm. National Goal Writing Day, if you want to follow us on Instagram, at Goal Writing Day, and that will be a place where you also see some stories as well as we ramp up for this day on December 27th. Dope, dope, dope. Like how... I, I, I don't want to say what was the greatest goal you saw accomplished because, like you said, each goal is for is it's, it yeah, is to, to to each individual. Mm-hmm. It has their specific meaning. Mm-hmm. But but ha- have have you been able to celebrate with many individuals as you've seen them start with the writing process right. and then come back and achieve it? Yeah, the biggest thing is being able to see that and seeing people's mm-hmm. journey. And like I do on that day, like I spend that whole me and my sister are like back and forth talking a lot about like what do you see. And you see a lot of different type of goals, man, and, and it's been really impressive. And then there'll be people that uh, I got a tweet maybe like a week ago and somebody I had posted about National Goal Writing Day, kind of like telling my story about it. And then someone tweeted me. It was like, yeah, this is the reason I did all of maybe one goal last year. And oh, I was wow. like, this is what I do it for. Right. Wow. Like it's it's just like good to see in those that I'm touching people to say, mm-hmm. hey, whatever goal I said, like, I'm just going to do it. And I, I take this day to reflect on it, you know. Yeah. Right after Christmas, before the NYE turn up, you know, before you get lit, <laughs> pop champagne, like yeah. those, you reflect on your goals so you can go into the mm. new year with some kind of strategy. Because if we just go in rolling, yeah, you know, you didn't plan, you didn't even set a foundation, so mm. that's important. Yeah, and and, and I don't I don't know what the research is, but I know when you write things down, yeah. I, I think the percentage is so much higher of you achieving. Yeah, because it's, it's it's proven that if you yeah. write your goals down, you are more likely to achieve those goals and because then, you see them every day. Yeah, and and even when you write, because I know that's one thing that Damon John talks talks a lot about, but then right. also the fact that if you write your goals down, I think it even spurs you to action. And right. then you, and then you, you even make more money. Wow, I didn't that, know that. Because I like that. Yeah, because there, there's a presentation I did money with. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a presentation I did up at Richland with their male achievement program, mm-hmm. and I broke it down. I was like, "How many of you all actually write down your goals? You don't see any hands." I said, "How many of you don't write down your goals at all?" Which was the majority of the percent. Right. Then went to how many of them write it and take action. So what was? It? Where were you speaking again? Uh, this was Richland College, my alma, one of my alma maters. Yeah, and yeah. you did what was the program? Oh, the Male Achievement Program. Male Achievement. How is that? Uh, man, it, their their program is pretty strong. Uh, Gabe Randall is the director over there, mm-hmm. but uh, their program pretty strong. That they, they've been graduating uh, a good amount of men. Some of them nope. been getting scholarships and stuff. No, nope. some of them at UNT. Yeah. But I mean, the guy the guys going to the program, they really create a brotherhood. They cultivate that, mm-hmm. and then you know they they go out to wherever, but then they always like return back home and. Wow. They they show love and wow. definitely show support. But I mean, the, the male achievement program up there is probably one one of my bigger supporters. Honestly, that's good. That's yeah, they always I mean, they always like, hey, what's up, John? Yeah, wherever you feel the love, like yeah. pour into that. So yeah, de- that definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. So, um, so Marcus, I, I know you're I know you're a faithful listener uh, yeah. to, to to the show, and um, so we have a f- few new segments that that we're working on incorporating now. Okay. Um, so, so the first segment I, I want to get to is a segment I like to call Five Words. Five Words. Five Words. And uh, the reason I call this Five Words is because I just want to hear from you mm-hmm. how you see yourself in five words. Is that now? Like I can yeah, go oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> not, I was waiting for somebody to say go. But yeah, I, I just, just want to hear from you, hear you describe yourself in five words, just because like what you're talking about before, self-reflecting, mm-hmm. just like we we're talking about with goal writing. And sometimes I think just in this year, 2018, and just where we are in society, we move so fast. And you said we don't give ourselves praise sometimes. Right. So, so I'm just curious to hear what, what's your five words? Are? Five words, problem solver, patient, uh, family, Fun. I don't want to use fun. That's whack. Let's take that one out. Problem solver, patient, family. Um, I don't know the word for this, but I just like a visual stimulation. So seeing things mm-hmm. visually like that, it, I um, take to that. So I don't know if that's a oh, word. like like that like the aesthetic type deal. Yeah, aesthetic. Okay. Like those things I catch. I don't know. That's what I would describe myself. Yeah, um, right. What number is that? Four. Unless you count problem solver as two, but that's fine. No. We'll, we'll count that as a we'll count that as a <laughs> compound word. word. It's is a it? compound word. Is it sister? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Two words or one word? No, no, no. We'll go one. We'll go okay, one. Right. We'll give you another. Um, and then um, just culture, like, I, and uh, it's it changes over time. So right now, mm. I'm, I really like tech. I really like sports, and those are like my two things that, that I'm like. Enjoying so, mm, yeah. yeah, that's dope. And I, I mean, now it's a great time to be involved in tech. Yeah, every time it seems like every time I look up, I see somebody else because I know Snoop is in on tech Everybody's now. On tech. Kevin Durant is in yeah. on tech now. So much data so. around. So like, how oh, can you uh, find sense. more data and use it for your benefit? So mm, I never even thought about it like that. Yeah, Dang. that's good. Yeah. Okay. So those are my five ways I would describe myself today. Dope, dope. Yeah, if I ask you tomorrow, you'll probably say five different ones, huh? Yeah, probably so. I probably will keep problem solver, family, and patient, though. I figure so. Okay, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so now you know the the winner the winner circle of the week because you were probably one of my one of the earlier winner circles of the week when I first rolled out the segment. Awesome. So yeah, you. I told you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> That's I was what like, I said awesome. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, we had this conversation. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the for those of you who might, this might be your first time listening to the show, the Winter Circle of the Week is just the opportunity where we take on the show and just really highlight an individual who's out here getting it right. and who might be going under the radar, an individual who might not be seen right. or, right. you know, or be heard. So uh, now I want to pass the torch to you. Filet. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so funny. Filet. But, but now uh, I want to pass to you, and I want to give you the opportunity now on this Feature Friday to to give a shout-out to somebody who you know is grinding and, and who's putting in that legwork but maybe might be unnoticed or, or haven't got their just due. All right, so this week's Winner's Circle is my guy, Cal Banks, DJ Cal Banks, KB. Uh, mm-hmm. My guy is now living in L.A., originally from Dallas, Texas. Uh, A quick story about him. He is one of the leaders of the Dallas boogie music that we used to hear. Oh, wow. Moving like a robot. Uh, What else? I need you. Okay. (laughs) A lot of the gig music. I can't can't remember a lot of the music. But anyways, he's one of the pioneers for that music. Work, work, don't stop. Really? So this this guy is in that uh, realm. And then... um, he went to Tennessee for college. Uh, I told him about UNT while he was there. He ended up transferring to UNT uh, where he uh, finished and completed school and got his degree there. But we were also roommates for two years, year and a half. And we hosted events. We did all of the graduation parties. He DJed. He was, you know, I was his driver. I was like driving him to DJ his first, when Chief Key first came to Dallas. Oh, wow. Uh, he was he DJed at that show. I drove him, like we would do all this. I was always behind him um, and still am. And so now he moved, he got an opportunity to sign with the one of the it's number one label in hip hop, mm. um, I would say. Yeah, that's number one, of course. Um, and so uh, now he's there, he's um, signed to TDE and yeah, um, he's going to be, he has already been and is going to continue to be on uh, more music that comes from that camp. Mm-hmm. Um, and originally he's done work with guys like Chaz French. Uh, he's put out a track with Maya. Um, and so he has a lot of stuff, Man. right? Yeah, and so amazing. this year I'm very excited about him. I went to L.A. Uh, maybe two weeks ago and he, we, uh, I went by his house and uh, chopped it up with him. And just learn so much more about him because he's grown. You know, we went to high school together, so 
This guy is wow. 16 at this time, and now he's 27. So, like, this 10-year difference, and we still, you know, from roommates to making money together and all these things, uh, now we, you know, now he's gotten to this level now. So I'm very proud of him. Uh, Oak Cliff raised, and he'll let you know it. Uh, <laughs> and so th- very proud of this guy, Cal Banks. So that is the Winner's Circle of the Week, Feature Friday. Yeah, that's dope, Boy, man. KB. Man, that's super dope. And like we were talking about before, like journeys and just going through like different processes of life. Right. Our processes. Chapters of life. Yeah, man. It's this thought that everything is supposed to come this fast. And I feel that way sometimes. It's like, man, I'm supposed to be, right? But you look at a guy like, and I'll just throw, uh, you look at a guy like a Charlemagne or Mm. a um, a Damon John or Ryan Seacrest or these guys like, that that it was a certain time frame and every you think that they had got it when they was 22 23 it's mm-hmm. like no it's you know mid 30s or whatever it really doesn't matter about the age but it's more about yeah. the time frame that they put Man. on these on the work and the trials that they go through each chapter of Man. life so yeah. those you know some of the inspirations but yeah that's and, and, and it's funny you say Charlemagne cuz i just i just got my audible subscription shout out to audible yeah. just got my audible subscription i started listening to uh, black privilege last night oh wow and then uh well, i was listening to black privilege and and i was listening to an interview of him one that he did with pastor Stephen Furtick right. but uh he got to the point where he started saying that it Every time he started a new job, he wouldn't even bring stuff into his office because right. he wasn't sure how long he was going to be there. Right. And that then ain't... he said after working 23 years, then he finally got comfortable. And now with the Breakfast Club, like he's more so comfortable in the space that he's in. Yeah. But that I, and I think that story is more consistent than not of people putting in 20, 10, whatever amount of years, although that's not always the case. Right. However, sometimes that level of work is required to do what you said before, yeah. laying that foundation. Laying, just laying foundation. I mean, Charlemagne can't go with, like, these guys, get, to get to that level, like, that does take a lot of time. And sometimes mm-hmm. you got some people that hit it right at that time, and it does, they don't have to go through a super long process. But yeah. every story is for them. Like, God doesn't make any mistakes, and he doesn't make any timing mistakes either. So yeah. it's just like, man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. And then, well, I'm just going to say this and we're going to move on. But because talking about like timelines and time scales, because there's another guy you probably heard of, a guy named Toby Nwigwi. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Earlier this year, he might have had 6,000 followers, I believe, on Instagram. I would say, yeah, if you're thinking about maybe earlier this year, like April, May, he was at like six something. And now he's, I don't even know what's the number. Now he's at 225K at least. Wow. Yeah, did sway in the morning because because before I I I loosely followed him because I'm I'm tied into the camp with ETA yeah. and and my my coach is Kendall Ficklin he's like ET's like he's like one of his yeah. guys but just seeing that process because I saw Toby in Toby Eric LA. Thomas yeah yeah yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, I I saw I saw uh, I saw Toby in L A because they were doing the stay ready and then like he was walking around he like he had a shirt for his tables but it was just like I think people really didn't know who he was at that time right. Or people really weren't trying to get to him. It's like, hey, hey, because he was just out there just just chilling, really, like yeah. man of the people. But now I went to his concert at the door. I missed it, that show, bruh. That was when Saturday night. It, it, it was a Sunday night. Two, Sunday it was, night. It this was, past Sunday. You was yeah, yeah and I yeah, missed yeah, yeah. it, bruh. I'm not gonna lie. That was probably one of my one of my favorite concerts. Wow. Like one of my fa- his energy is raw. Yeah. Him, him and his you know wife, where he went to school. Fat. Uh, I, uh, yeah, he went to UNT. Yeah, man, we reading out of there, man. Yeah, he went Got to UNT. I, and then, like, what, what's it called? Like two two episodes ago, I, I did a like the episode was inspired by him and his wife Fat because yeah. like his message is making purpose popular. Yeah, and that's wild. he on he's on the set. They did the show on their anniversary night. He brought her out about five times, gave her a rose every time. Just hearing the way he celebrated his wife. Yeah, and I'm like, bruh, that's real. Yeah, like yeah. every time he wasn't ashamed to kiss her, he wasn't ashamed to get excited for her. And yeah. he's like, hey, da 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 da, about to, about to bring out the baddest thing that I done seen with these green eyes. Yeah. And he was, I was like, man, like the, it, it was dope. And then he's rapping, then she's rapping. Wow. And then she's dancing, and he's rapping, and she introduces him. And it was it was just beautiful. Just because tough energy. Good yeah, energy. You ha- yeah, I, I haven't seen nothing like that before. Wow. And he performed maybe like two and a half hours. I can't name a song that he didn't do. He almost he did just, like all his songs. Wow! Just raw How energy. Did I, miss that? I don't know why bro, I didn't see that. You 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 got to see him, bro. Yeah. You got to see him. So, uh, 
we've started posting his content. He used to do these um, get twisted Sundays. Get twisted Sundays. No, before that he was doing oh. animations. Oh yeah, he was yeah, putting yeah, out yeah. these animations. So Toby we would post. The the, yeah, Toby from the SWAT animation. Yeah. So we would post them on the site and on Instagram. And then the get twisted Sundays, which he's rapping uh, on the couch. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like you see the progression because those are content moments. Like they're. You can't run all of that at the same time. Like the 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 animation is one thing to galvanize like him telling the story, and then the twist of Sunday is like, oh, what I really want to show y'all is that I got bars and I can give it to you every Sunday, mm. right? And now you get the guy who is uh, on stage and just taking over every single time. Yeah. And when he's on stage, like I've seen the clips of the shows, when he's on stage, it's not back and forth across the stage. No, it is art. It is in these all of these yeah. visual stimulating mm-hmm. things yeah. that he uses similar to, uh, not similar to, but just like a Travis Scott or mm-hmm. a Childish Gambino, like these moments yeah. where they use visual things yeah. to bring their audience in deeper. Man, yeah, because yeah. the visual, the visuals was a whole nother. Oh yeah, that was a whole nother ball game. Oh, then yeah. he had, then he had different people like saying happy anniversary. Then they were running like the videos, yeah. like Instagram videos. I was like, man, this is this is crazy. Content, man. But yeah, it, it it was it was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing to see. Um, right. Man, just just really super dope. Um, so so now I want, want to transition. We'll, we'll go to the quote of the week in a second. All right. But now I want to ask you, like I was telling you before, we're gonna call this segment "This or That." This or that. This or that. That's what we're gonna call this segment, Dennis. So now I'm just gonna go through it. Just a few questions, mm-hmm. a handful or two handfuls, whatever. And I just want you to say the first. I just want you to say the first one that comes to mind. Okay. Okay. It's gonna Wait, be like I get rapid to, I have fire. to pick between. Yeah, you pick okay. between the two. Gotcha. It's gonna be rapid, like. So don't try to answer slow. No pause. Yeah, no pause. No pause. No pause. No pause. Cool. Okay, you ready? Yep. Chick Fil A or raisin canes. Chick Fil A. Pancakes or waffles. Waffles. Blueberry. Pe- <laughs> I like, hey, hey, I rock with the blueberry waffles blueberry. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it's at. Pizza or wings. Wings. Summer or fall? Fall. Walmart or Target? I like Target now. I'm a Target guy. (laughs) That's because in New York they don't have Walmart, so I've kind of like. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because they got the, uh, what's the mother store? They got another store. I I can't think of it. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, I can't think. I know they got other bodegas, but anyway. Uh, Crayola or Rose Art? Crayola. Mm, Coke or Pepsi? Neither. (laughs) (laughs) Valentine's or New Year's? Valentine's. Oh, okay. That's cute. Mountain Dew or Sprite? Sprite. Sprizzy? Marvel or DC? Marvel. Mm. Okay. Hey, I got a lot of mm. That means okay. that ain't what I expect you to nah, say. No, no, no. Nah. When it comes to Marvel and DC, bro, I, I, people are like, oh, no, I'm Marvel. Oh, I'm DC. I'm like, bro, I can't tell you which character goes where. Um, I just know. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. I, 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 I watched the, I watched the movie because successful people don't have time for that. Yeah, oh, successful man. people don't have time for that. All right. What is so. Luke, uh, Luke Cage in? I think Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're yeah. Spider-Man. All right, Marvel. I'm good then. All right, you know. Uh, Superman's Marvel. We don't know. I don't know. I don't, right. I don't know. Okay, but yeah, I mean, that, that's just fun. I just want to do that for I like that. Fun. I like that. It was a good question, too. Oh, yeah. dope. I but I came to Waffles, man, yeah. I'm a blueberry ego kind of guy. I pop two hey. in. Hey. <laughs> that's the syrup <laughs> motion. I just oh, yeah, I, my I douse. I douse my waffles and so I probably shouldn't use as much syrup as I do, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna we're gonna as we prepare to wind down, man. I want to I want to do the, the the quote of the week. Awesome. And uh, I just want to hear hear from you, like what's a favorite quote or something that keeps you going, keeps you motivated. Um. So one quote that I like is, uh, "In order to do cool stuff, you have to you you have to say yes and yes, but but never no." Right, like you have to say yeah, but give a different option or yes, and we can do that. Mm. But to create cool stuff, you have to do the. You have to be yes and. You can't say no because once you say no, like you have defeated yourself all the way around. So mm. um, that's one of the quotes that I have uh, found to be something that I hold close. And then, um, I, can I give another quote? Well, yeah, you can do. I, I was going. I was actually going to ask you. You oh, want to do? Sorry. You want to do a final thought? No, no. I was going right. to say you want to do like a final thought, something that you want to just tell the people to encourage them or whatever, tangible, whatever. All right, you I'll wanna... leave that as the quote. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can. Yeah, I mean, fi- final thought. You, you can. Yeah. You can roll. What, whatever you want to share with the people. My final thought is to uh, take advantage of safety net moments. 
And mm-hmm. so these safety net moments are moments that you are taking a leap, but you can see the safety net a little bit. Like, and the example that I, I found this to be where I want to share this thought is like moving to New York. That's the first like leap. Like, uh oh, I'm going to the top of the map, right? Like, I'm going, <laughs> uh oh, right? Like, that's how I felt. And then I realized, wait, you're going to take care of the things that pe- most people worry about. Yeah. So I had to take advantage of that safety moment. And it, even if you want to do, uh, if you're doing an event or you're writing something or you're, there's a moment there that you realize before you do it, it's a safety net there and I can, uh, I can take advantage of it. And if I do it right, I know that there was something there to hold me up. And so wow. take advantage of safety net moments. Dang, I That's like my final that. Thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Where, where can the people follow you? How can they find out more information about the culture supplier and even National Goal, Goal Writing Day? Yeah, man. Let them know. Uh, so my Instagram, Marcus D. Gilmore on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And then the culture supplier at the culture supplier, Twitter, Instagram, uh, fa- um, Facebook, and YouTube. And then Goal Writing Day, National Goal Writing Day at Goal Writing Day. Dope, dope. I'm definitely going to have, I'm going to listen back to the show and I'm going to have all that down in the show notes so yeah. people can click and they can find you. And the it, clicks, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be easier to, uh, to, to get plugged in with you for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Well, I got a question for you. What's up? So your goals that you did last year, you okay. know, where did you net out on those? Like, did you, you complete most of them or oh, the ones you did complete, can you share and kind of reflect on them a little bit? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so one, one goal I actually did write, well, there's a couple of goals I wrote, and right. just being honest, since we're this, we have to be honest. Yeah. Um, so one goal I know I wrote, I said I was going to start writing a second book. I began the project, so I guess that's success. Yeah, it is. How, however, I, I didn't... <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, however, like, uh, I, I allowed other stuff to deter, like, from finishing the the second book. I got you. Yeah, like, I, like it was just, okay, th- I, th- uh, uh, grad school, no grad school, what you right. going to do? Right. So that was one that I, I was deterred from. By myself. Yeah. I deterred myself from it. I didn't keep it front of mind, like you were saying earlier, and didn't lock down and hone in on that. Right. However, some other goals that I set was uh, getting getting um, getting more than 10,000 listens on this podcast. Yeah. First year. Uh, we have 13,000 plus now. Oh, wow. Um, Amazing, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate Take it. Them numbers. Yeah, man. So so did that as well as uh, booking four out-of-state speaking engagements. Wow. We made We made that happen you as did. well. Yeah, man. That's so, real. Yeah. yeah, that's real. Yeah, man. So now I'm 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 definitely gonna uh definitely gonna really really take hold to that. Um because I know vision boards are cool, right. but I know writing goals and seeing your goal written down, the Bible tells us write the vision, make it plain. Yeah. So I mean it's it's time and I'm gonna like put it in a frame or something. Yeah. Get it up there. And then like take a picture and keep it on my phone, screensaver type deal. Awesome. But yeah, man, so uh, man, Marcus, definitely, definitely, thank you I for appreciate thank it, man. man. Thank, yeah, thank you for stopping it, by. It was, it was well, well overdue, like you said. Yeah. Um, and everybody, if you would like to uh, follow Marcus, stay connected with him, stay connected with the coach supplier, and get your goals written down. Yes. We're going to have all this information down in the show notes. And uh, if you want to follow us, I would just encourage you to go to JonathanJonesSpeaks.com, and I have all my um, social links down at the bottom. And we can get connected or YouTube because my YouTube following has been crazy. They've been super supportive. Yeah. Jonathan Jones speaks on everything. Jonathan Jones speaks. Across the board. Um, yeah, across the board. But uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and close it out like we always do. This is TEDx speaker and bestselling author Jonathan Jones wrapping up with the Marcus Gilmore in the building. Hey. Uh, reminding you to speak your success, believe in your greatness, and continue to create the life and business of your dreams. Why would you want to live any other way?